Well, good evening. Uh, welcome to uh, Faith Christian Center World Outreach. Apostle Rock here, uh, Dr. Ellis sitting here, and uh, Pastor John's in the back, and we're doing a live to you tonight. Uh, stormy weather, uh, but never stormy heart. We thank you tonight for your joining us. Um, we believe here in this ministry that as you study the Word of God and you put yourself in the presence of intimacy with the Almighty God, as he said, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. We believe that your divine walk here on the earth will be greater than that that could ever be accomplished by your own uh, efforts or abilities. Now, in tonight's Bible study, and again, those of you that are joining us live stream, which is, uh, you know, I don't know where you're from all over, but I do thank you uh, tonight. Uh, sometimes people send us comments from all over and, you know, just say, oh, this is that, or that was good, or this, whatever. Well, we appreciate you, and we want you to know that. We always appreciate people uh, that have a great interest in the Word of God and to build our lives on the foundation of the Word with the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And we thank you tonight for your tuning in. And wherever you might be, I don't know how the weather is in that particular area, but we believe that the power of God will keep you, your family, your home, your business, whatever, uh, because you belong to the Lord. As we've said in the past, there are many things that we endure as even the world endure, but God keeps us through things. And so tonight might be one of those nights, wherever you are, wherever you might be watching this, or whenever you might be watching this. It might not be just tonight, but it could be some other time. Now, we've been discussing for the last uh, three lessons here uh, about uh, the prophetic work that takes place in our divine uh, walk with God. Uh, and when we say prophetic work, we're talking about words that come, instructions that come, fresh new revelations that come that change your, your you know, perspective and give you more faith, uh, helps you to uh, carry the bear, you know. Uh, some people say we're bearing our cross. Well, you know, when we bear our cross, we're supposed to make it better as Jesus made his better. And so when we are taking our particular steps and walking by, uh, divine direction. You know, there are certain things that everybody's made for certain certains, okay? Things that are certain, not things that are just, but things that are certain, things that have been ordained, picked out for you to walk in, to be a part of. And we have an enemy that tries to divert us from all walks of life uh, in every culture and every nation away from the things of God so that we might hinder, or, or should I say this, he tries to hinder God's progress. Uh, in, in the earth. But that's not going to happen. Uh, everything that God said always comes to pass, and it always happens, and he's faithful to his word. So we are dealing with, particularly in this particular time, a lot of hurt. A lot of people have passed through from the pandemic. A lot of people are sick from other things. A lot of people are going through problems that have been put way back now, where they used to be on the forefront. They've been put way back, you know, and People are so into what the pandemic is doing and what the vaccines are doing and all those things. And yet, there are people that are still hurt from different things and even emotional hurt, okay? Not just physical problems, but emotional pains and, and problems that persist in people. And, and if you can get a hold of this particular message about the grace of God that works in this prophetic work, how God carries us by his grace, how he, he moves us by his grace, if you can get a hold of this, and get some more light uh, on your understanding, then it's gonna help you uh, overcome, it's gonna help you ha be victorious, conquer, or be delivered. It's gonna help you in many ways to, to have a, a secure and satisfying uh, faith in God, knowing that God is who he is, and he's always gonna, whatever he says, it's already done, and how faithful he is, you know, it depends on, you know, do you really trust the Lord? you know, for his faithfulness. And so let's hop into the word tonight. Uh, from way back Genesis, we started. We gave a picture of, of uh, grace, uh, you know, and how grace is always there where disappointment is. Uh, Jacob and Esau, we used that analogy with them, and, you know, and it's a picture in the Old Testament. And last week, last Sunday, we came up to uh, this particular book that we're going to start in tonight, the book of John, uh, chapter 1. We're going to start there, and then we're going to some other books because I want you to see, I want you to see grace and truth uh, 
in the person of Jesus and how he, how he carried that grace and truth to benefit your understanding, okay? If you have something and you don't understand it, you can't use it, no matter how valuable it could be. Uh, I remember this when we first started ministry many years ago. Uh, a young man had come across a young person in, in, in London, England, who was living in the, uh, on the streets, sleeping in cardboard boxes and whatever. And when I was actually over there, I saw people actually sleeping on cardboard boxes and things, and you wouldn't think that was there, but it's there, okay? And so this young man had run across this young lady, and he was, this is a, he was sort of like a journalist, and he was interviewing people. And uh, he found this lady that had a, a picture of the Queen of England. And, you know, and uh, he asked her where she got that picture from, and, and she said, well, she had served the Queen and, you know, and lived in the place close to the Queen and all these things. And, and uh, you know, at the Queen's death, you know, that was left to her. And so that was all she had. And she had lost pretty much everything else in life, but she held on to that picture of the queen that she had. And so the guy asked her, could he examine the picture, you know, to see how, you know, the authenticity of the picture and, you know, and all these good things. And so she said, well, as long as you promise to bring it back, because that's all she had. And so he examined the picture. And within the frame of the picture, was a will that the queen had written to for this young lady to have, that she would be taken care of all of her life, that she would have servants and everything would be laid out for her life. And she had that within the picture. She carried, when she lost everything, she carried it wherever she was, she had that picture, but she was not, she did not have the understanding of what was inside of that picture that was already given to her. And this is some of the things that people go through in these days when they walk away from the word or when they, they don't give attention to the word. And even believers who sometimes act like they're unbelieving believers when we don't pursue, as Jesus said, and be very fervent about having an understanding about what Jesus has already given to us. He's willed everything that you and I would need in life. In fact, the scripture says that he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And we need to really focus in on that so that you know, we don't take a message, uh, you know, like some of the messages on grace is, is almost like bad money, you know. Uh, it's, 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 you know, you don't have any suspect about, or you don't, you, don't, you don't question the money, you know, and yet it could be counterfeit. And upon close inspection, someone who knows counterfeit money will look at it and say automatically, no, this is counterfeit. So you have to really watch you know, how you hear things in these days because many things are being taught in this end time about the end time. Many people are saying many things and yet there's so much that Jesus said about us that we should take care of our brothers and sisters in Christ because when we do, it's like taking care of him. We can never forget the believers and the people that are around us that they still need to be taken care of no matter how many messages are taught, no matter how many messages are spoke about different times and things. We still have the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ in us to walk in his heart in every generation and every moment of every day to be an example of his character toward all people. Amen? So let's look at this particular uh, powerful understanding of, of grace that the Lord has given to us, this prophetic word this prophetic life, the work of the prophetic in our divine walk, it speaks, it shows us things, it tells us, it directs us, and it helps us to walk and to have faith to overcome, all right? Now, in the book of John, this is where we were Sunday, and I said all of that because, you know, maybe this is your first time uh, listening, viewing. Uh, maybe tonight is the first time that you're tuning in for this particular message. Go back and listen to the other ones that we talked about prophetic work, you know, this prophetic work that goes on within our divine walk and get some great understanding of how powerful what God has given to us is in our life, okay? Now, in John chapter 1, here's a, a view of the disciple talking about what John the Baptist saw, and we know that when you see something, that it has a greater impact on you than what you just, just hearing something, you know? If you were, if you saw a car accident, then that has a greater impact on you than if somebody told you that there was an accident down the road. It's a greater impact on you. And so this is a testimony of what John saw, what John heard, 
for what they saw and what they heard, and they said that they beheld all of this. And so it's been handed over to you and I so that by faith you and I can walk through this and we can see God and we can understand that it's not just a picture anymore that we're looking at from the Old Testament, but now we're looking at the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at grace in a person. Uh, he says this in verse 12. Well, verse 11, verse 10. Uh, we'll start in verse 10, all right? Uh, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And he came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. Now, you need to underline that because that's most important for you, okay? The sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, uh, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So we see that being born again of the will of God causes us to become the sons of Almighty God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. And I asked everybody, Sonny, to underline that word beheld, because again, when I see something, it has a greater impact on me than just hearing about something, all right? And it says, so we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father. Then it says this, full of grace and truth, all right? Full of grace, not, not part, but full of grace, okay? And it says, John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This is he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace. Now, in Sunday's message, I explained to everybody that just as the, the air light that you and I walk in every day, well, the air light that we walk in, we have received that from the fullness of the sun, Okay. The sun, the beams of the sun has caused the air light now that you and I walk in, all right? We receive the fullness of that. So we have the fullness of that which we live in from something else, okay? And, and, and I also explained the fountain, the water that pours out of the fountain into a cistern, okay? The cistern is living by the fullness of the fountain, okay? And so you and I now, we live by the fullness of Jesus Christ. Now, when you, you get into this and you get some revelations of this, you're going to find out that this is why grace in our life is so powerful because we're living from the fullness of grace and truth, not just grace because some people just teach grace. No, grace and truth. You can't, you can't divide the Lord. Grace and truth came through him, okay? And it says this, and of his fullness have we received, all we received, grace for grace. That means we get grace upon grace, to constantly keep on giving us more grace, okay? So the grace that we live by will cause us to step into and will be promoted to more grace, all right? And he says, for the law was given by Moses, right? The picture. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, the person. The law was given. The picture of grace was given. But gr Jesus Christ brought forth grace and truth, Okay? So which, which the law caused them to stumble because they were trying to do works to, to have an approval of righteousness. And we know now that when we walk by faith, that is the approval that, that causes us now to please God, okay? Walking by faith. And it says, no man has seen God at any time. And this is the, this is the, the big point that we really wanted to make Sunday, all right? No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. So Jesus, as son of, son of man, that was the title he used. That title actually represented mediator, all right? So he came as mediator between God and man, as it is listed over in Isaiah chapter 53. He came as mediator between God and man to fix things that were stated or ordained before the foundations of the earth, okay? So he comes to, to share with you and I grace and truth because being in the bosom of the father he was the one who qualified knowing the mind of God and knowing the heart of God to bring grace and truth which were the two things that fallen man needed okay we needed grace all right we needed truth because guess what without without both of them mixing together you and I still have a lack of understanding of how God loves us and how much God wants us to be promoted so this is where uh, we pretty much stop Sunday in explaining how grace and, and, and truth work together. Can't have one without the other. You know, you need grace, but you also need truth. P 
Paul asked the Lord about his situations and circumstances. And, you know, and he says three times, three times he sought the Lord. And the Lord was telling him, my grace is sufficient for you. All right. In other words, when you, when you meet your fears, all right, grace will bring you to a place where you can constantly walk in righteousness. All right. Where you can fulfill the rights, the rights that you have in God, which is the truth of God toward you. And so Jesus brought these truths to us from the heart of God. He's the one in the bosom of God. He brought these truths to us from the heart of God. He brought us the mind of God, that God has willed for us to have certain things in our life, that we might live as overcomers, that we might be men and women, okay, that conquer this world and live for God in this world and establish the kingdom of heaven on the earth, all right? And so here we are today with this particular message. Uh, again, the prophetic work, the things that are spoken by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, things that come out of that divine realm for you and I or toward you and I. While you and I are, are believing God for things, uh, working the service of God in the earth, living a life of a believer in the earth, uh, God has not left out anything for any part of our life. So whenever we come to him, it is based on he being the priority part of our life. He's the center of everything that we do. He, he's the one who answers every part of our life for us because we know now that he is Lord, okay? And when he is Lord, he is Lord. He's not just Lord over some things. He's Lord over all things, okay? All right? So tonight what we want to do is we want to look at uh, something else to add to this, and this will bring some clarity to you, uh, to all, I guess, who's, you know, if you really give attention to it and you really want to you really want to walk with God, I mean, if you want to see the sick heal, if you want to see yourself heal, then you, you really need to uh, understand the way Jesus taught some people, we can miss it because we can miss the, again, the counterfeit grace that speaks to us. Does, it never deals with the truth of everything. It deals with how good God is and how merciful God is. But it doesn't deal with the truth of things, okay, which goes to the root of everything, all right? And so I want you to go with me to uh, the book of Mark uh, real quick. Mark chapter 2. And let's look at a particular lesson here that shows you and I the person, all right, the person, Jesus Christ, who brought grace and truth, how he's functioning and how grace and truth functions because he does this on the basis of the way Jesus works. He does this on the basis of who he is, not who we are, but who he is. And he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. And I know that there are things that you desire for life. And I know that there are things we've been teaching for 30 years now. I have anyway, almost 30 years for, for things to, the things that God showed me, the goodness of God that he has always wanted his people to have. He's always wanted people to be healed. He's always wanted people to be in unity, uh, wanted marriages to flourish and whatever, children to grow up in the Lord and know that God's goodness is there for them and to, and to not just to hear about it, but to experience it, all right, to experience the Holy Spirit. We've been teaching this for all these years, you know, and we'll continue to teach it. It's, it's what God gave us to do. I remember the day my wife and I, we were riding, and we said, you know, we just wanted to be a blessing to God's people. Well, God took that word at heart, all right? I can tell you that. And we didn't know what we will have to learn to do to be able to be a blessing, but all of it comes uh, in the coin of Jesus. He's paid for it all, okay? And so tonight, uh, in this particular lesson, we will see the person of grace and truth operating so that we might get a clear understanding of how we can be healed, uh, how we can be delivered from certain things that may be going on, iniquitous uh, uh, physical problems that have been passed down by parents. You know, when a parent marries, when a mother and a father, you know, when, they, when, when two people get together and they become a mother and a father, all right, there are certain things that are passed from each one of them to the child. And a mother or a father could pass two or three iniquitous uh, signs from each one of them into a child, which now that child has double what each one of those parents had. You know, and then you, then you have to fight in life these particular physical things or mental things that are going on, and you have to struggle with those things, okay? And it's not the Lord's fault, okay, because he's given us Jesus to deliver us from those things. 
It's our fault because we don't, we don't, again, persevere to find out the power of God that's more than enough for everyone, everyone, and to take care of everyone at the same time and not miss anybody, okay? So in this particular lesson, here we go. It says, again, Jesus entered into Capernaum after some days. Uh, this was his headquarters. This is where he lived. You, you read this throughout the scriptures. This is where he always came back to. And it says, in, uh, after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Whose house? His house, all right? He was in his house. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them, all right, from his house. He didn't wait for Sunday. He didn't wait for Wednesday. He didn't wait for Saturday. He, look, he was just going like any time he get the privilege to preach the word of God to whoever comes, he's going to preach the word of God, okay? And it says they come, they come unto him bringing one of the sick of the palsy, which, born, which was born by four. And when they could not come near or nigh unto him for the press or all the people that were outside, it says that they uncovered the roof where he was and when they had broken it up, they let the man down, let the bed down on which the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, he says, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and they were reasoning in their hearts. Why did this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reason within themselves, he said to them, why reason you these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man have power on the earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, Take up thy bed, go, go thy weight into thine house. And immediately, it says, he arose, took up his bed, went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw it on this fashion. We never saw it on this fashion. Now, when we come back and we begin to look at this, we begin to look at the story that there, there are four people or four family members or four friends, four acquaintances, but they loved this particular person who was sick of the palsy, even though, and he was sick, but he was, he was unable to move. But he was sick, but he was unable. He couldn't do things for himself, even being sick. He was still unable to do things for himself. And the love or the, the kindness that they had in our heart was to bring him to Jesus. And uh, the understanding of this particular move of these, these four that bought him was that they had it in their heart that they were bringing, them, bringing him to Jesus and they were only going to do this one time. All right? They were only going to do it one time. Why, why do you say one time? Because of the extremities of their faith. When they could not find a way in, they found a way over. All right? And because they found a way over, they came on Jesus' house. This was not a, a, a you know, a split for you. This was not a, a, a you know, a one of those houses that's two or three stories. This was just a house with a roof over it in one level, you know, and, uh, and, and it says that they came up on the house top, all right? And they began to remove the tiles. They were on the roof. Now, they had to remove those tiles big enough to allow the size of a man on a, on a, on a you know, a, a makeshift bed to be let down through that roof, okay? So this was no little teeny hole like this. This was a great big old hole, probably the size what you would say, you know, a casket would be. And so they, they, they lower him down with four ropes. Now, this man, he was unable to move, and yes, he was sick of the palsy, but he could see, all right? He could hear what was going on, and he probably could talk, but he just couldn't move, okay? He just couldn't move. So someone stepped in. 
out of their love, knowing how powerful Jesus was, knowing how good God is. And they said, we're only going to do this one time. It only takes one time to get him before Jesus to get him whole. And they went up on the roof and they tore the roof up because they were so determined to get this man, their friend, could have been their father, could have been, I don't know, could have some relative. They got him to Jesus that one time. And that's why Jesus could look at them and see. It says he saw their faith. Look what it says. It says, when Jesus saw their faith. In other words, he saw them so determined. He didn't have any conversation with them about the man. All right? He had no conversation. They didn't tear the roof up and didn't talk to Jesus and said, Jesus, we just had to do this because this is our friend and we just got to get him here. No, it says they just tore that roof up because they knew that if they could get their sick friend in the presence of Jesus, that his grace and compassion, his truth for mankind would heal that man. It says they let him down and they, they made sure that he was going to be right there in front of Jesus. You know, if you're going to tear up something, make sure it's right in front of the Lord. All right? And it says they, they lowered him down. And it says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy. Now, you got to get this. Okay? Jesus says, son, thy sins are forgiven thee. What do you mean, son? Hmm? Son? Whoa, oh, what did we just read? Those that believe in his name, he gave them the power to become the what? Sons of God. All right? So this man was a, in his heart, he believed, he believed Jesus. He believed on God. All right? Again, believe in his name. This is why they're there, because of who he is. And Jesus says, son, your sins are forgiven you. Oh, boy. Here go the religious people. But there were certain scribes sitting there who had the doctrine that said only God can forgive sins. They had the right doctrine, but they did not apply it right. Remember Sunday I said there are people who have good thoughts about Jesus, but they do not have the right ones? All right? Who do men say that I am? They said all kinds of things, good thoughts, but not the right one. See? See? You got to get this. So, so these men, these are the religious leaders, and they're there, and they're sitting there, and they're going like, you know something? Why did this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Now, these are the religious leaders. They had the Old Testament, but they did not understand the application of the Old Testament. This is why they missed Jesus, all right? Because in Isaiah 53, so we're going to go there in a minute, in Isaiah 53, it clearly says that when the Messiah comes, that he was going to bear the iniquities or the penalties. Okay? He was going to bear the penalties or the iniquities of his people. Right? So he says this. Jesus said this. Immediately when he perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said to them, why reason you with these, with the, you these things in your heart? See, you're the ones who should know who I am. You're the ones who have the gate to heaven. You're the ones who should know who I really am. To hear me say, thy sins are forgiven, you should know that only God can do that, as you're saying. But you're not thinking that the Messiah is here. You're not looking at me as God's son. You're looking at me as somebody else. See, everybody that comes to church don't come because they want things from God. A lot of times people come because they're just curious. Or maybe they just have an illness that they just want to want to be healed, but they're not serious and interested in knowing God. They just have, again, things that they just want to be fixed. And again, some people just come being curious. I just want to see what's going on over there. I want to see what the whole, they say the Holy Spirit is healing people. I just want to see, you know, if the Holy Spirit is healing people, you know, I just want to see. They, they're curious. Everybody doesn't come because they have an interest to God. They want to know God more. If you get to know God more, the, the things of the Holy Spirit will be revealed to you. I can tell you that. And it says immediately in his spirit, he said this, whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins are forg be forgiven thee, or to say arise and take up thy bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man have power on the earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed and go thy way unto thy house. 
Now, what is Jesus doing? Hmm? Immediately, as he did through many of his teachings with us and showing us, there is a cause that is making this disease to be in this man's body. There's a cause, all right? There's a cause. And if Jesus doesn't deal with the cause, he really can't fix what's going on. And this is why grace and truth must accompany each other. Because to fix the palsy, he directs the man toward his sin. He says, son, thy sins are forgiven thee. So he's going to the cause of why he's a paralytic. He's going to the cause of why he has palsy. He's going to the cause of why these men had to bring him. He's going to the cause. And once he deals with the cause, then guess what? He can deal with the effect or the penalty of what that man is going through. Remember the lady that was bent over, Luke chapter 13, for 18 years? And remember how Jesus came in and he dealt with the spirit of infirmity? You know, he laid hands on her. He had to deal with the cause. The cause, the enemy was there. Uh, uh, Acts uh, 1038, how Jesus went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He has to deal with the cause. See, the cause, it, it, it can only be removed by truth. See, the cause can only be removed by truth. If you're an adulterer, then you need to know what the truth of God's word says to remove that out of your life. If you're an alcoholic, if you're a druggie, if you're whatever, you know, if you're just a, a straight out sinner, you have to deal with the cause, okay? Once you deal with the cause, then guess what? All of that other stuff can be dealt with. That's where the grace comes in. But the truth brings you straight to the cause, all right? And so this is why if people are just teaching about, oh, this is this and this is that, but they don't go to the cause, then they're not preaching grace and truth. They're just preaching the grace that they want to appease people's lives or their ears. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So Jesus goes straight to the cause. He says, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Then they jumped up and down. Who can forgive sins except God? So he says, okay, in order for me to show you that I have the power to forgive sins, guess what I'm going to do? Take up your bed and walk. So when he took up his bed and walked, he demonstrated the power that he had to remove the sin or to deal with the cause and then to deal with what was going on. This is why repentance is so powerful because Jesus is showing us in all of his gospel, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's showing us that repentance digs at the root. It cuts at the root of the stuff that's wrong. See, until it cuts it away. Sometimes you have to repent about the same thing more than once in order to get the root out. I know somebody's going like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm a man of faith. Yes, you are. But every man of faith has to go back to the things that were in his life when he got born again because there were many things that were planted in you, all right? Either through your flesh or through your mind, either through experiences in life, those things have been planted in you and you're gonna have to go back many times over because guess what? Just getting, asking God to forgive you something for one time and then you constantly still doing it shows you that the root is still there because there's never any fruit in a tree without there being roots under the tree first. And this is where the truth comes in. Then the grace separates you from the penalty. See, the grace separates you now from the penalty. The, pen the grace takes care of the penalty. The penalty for his sin was that he was laying on a bed, couldn't move, couldn't take care of himself and whatever. And Jesus dealt with that first. And now, guess what? He can deal with the sickness, the palsy. So when you and I, come on, go meet up, Isaiah chapter 53. When you and I understand that, guess what? We can't just walk around and do everything we want to do and, and, and then keep telling, telling everybody, well, the grace of God is sufficient for me. Yes, it is. But the truth of God is the thing that's, that you need to walk in. 
so that the grace can be applicable in your life that you might walk in the righteousness of God and that, that thing that used to bother you now has been severed at the root, has been cut away out of your life. Now it can't produce any fruit in your life. But if you still got stuff that's still producing the same fruit in your life over and over and over and over, you got to go back to the truth of God's word and deal with the root. And once the root is dealt with, then guess what? Grace will deal with the fruit. Grace will deal with the penalty of why that root is wrong. He says this in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 11. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall, set, and, and shall, and shall be satisfied by the knowledge. Uh, by, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear thou iniquities, or he shall bear the, the, the punishment of whatever sin that was that was never asked forgiveness of or was never repented of. See, this is why Jesus could sit there and say, son, your sins are forgiven you. This is why he could do that, because he knew who he was, but they didn't know who he was. And again, we come back to uh, the, 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 the grace message that some people teach, and everybody don't teach this, but there, there's a great mixture out there that, guess what, I can do whatever I want to do, and God is okay with me. That, that can't be true because if the root is still there, then something is wrong with you. And Jesus never came to give us grace to leave us the way we were. Grace always changes us into his image. It causes us to be more and more like him every day. The more and more trees that you dig up out of the forest of your life, the more and more light that comes in that, guess what, other things now can grow. It's like why, you know, many people when they want to uh, grow new trees and grow new forests, what they do is they come in and they, and they set a fire and they burn out all the undergrowth. And the reason they burn the undergrowth out is because guess what? They need some sunlight to get to the forest floor so that new things can spring forth. And this is why, how grace works in our life. It brings us to the place where now instead of that old root producing the same old fruit in our life that we used to have when we were just pledging sin every day. Guess what? Now new things begin to spring up in our life and new foliage begins to come out and you have, you know, not just leaves anymore, but you start seeing blossoms on things and you start seeing fruit coming up where there never was any fruit before. This is how grace works in our life. Not for us to just continue to do the same stuff. But he came to take care of our punishments for the sins that we had in our life so that we might walk in a newness of life. Come on, go with me to the book of Matthew tonight. You guys here? Again, like bad money. There's some counterfeit things that are going on. And we need our men and women to be healed. We need people to be delivered. Yes, the end time is, is right on us. But guess what? We still need to be healed. We still need to walk in freshness every day. We still need to walk in new revelations. We still need to have great words. And when Jesus spoke these prophetic words, because again, this was him going toward his destiny, what he came here to do. Prophetic words were, only thing, were the only things that he ever spoke about. He spoke things about him going to Jerusalem and dying in three days being raised. He spoke about, guess what, in my father's house, many mansions. He spoke about things that, guess what, pertain to his, to his lifestyle, to his walk. And this is what you got to do. Your confession can't be in the mornings that you get up and you go like, oh, another bad day. No, no, no. This is the day that the Lord had made. How can you claim that the day that the Lord made is bad? Everything might not be kosher for you, but guess what? You should know and understand his faithfulness that he's working out things to turn out for your good. You know, every, every saint that we see, even Peter, in the night that, the night that they took communion, you, you get this, in the night that they took communion, we call it the Lord's Supper, Jesus sat down with all of them and he told all of them, he says, there's a betrayer at my table. One of you going to betray me tonight. And they begin to ask each other, you know, speaking around, say, is it I? And they ask the Lord, is it I? Is it I? Even Judas said it to the Lord, is it I? Knowing that it was him. All right? Peter said, Lord, I don't care if everybody leave you. I'm going to be with you. Even unto death. 
Jesus said, Peter, you don't know what you're talking about. Before the night is over, you're going to deny me three times. And he did. All the others, guess what? They ran off. It was one traitor, but it was 11 betrayers. How many hours passed from the time they sat there and broke the new covenant? And in the love of Jesus' arms, they were right there. And then just a few hours later, everybody's gone. They did not understand him. They did not understand the grace and the truth that was before them. They had good thoughts, but they did not have the right ones. And this is what we're saying to you tonight. You, you must understand that Strong faith and, and true faith will always have to deal with reason and the senses. It's going to always have to deal with what everybody said. Well, somebody said this. Your ears hear all that stuff. You got two of them. Okay? So you take in twice as much damage when you're listening to damage. When you're listening to wrong stuff, you got two ears. You're taking in, you're taking in double anointing of, of, of wrong stuff. All right? This is why it's so important that Jesus said, take heed to how you hear. When, when, you, when you're going to be a strong person in faith and you're going to be a, a person of, of, of dynamic faith, you have to understand that reason, the things that you know and what other people know and what they say and what, you, what you've taken in, you have to know that those things have already fortified themselves to, to guide you in life. Those are your belief systems. You've already fortified, this is what I'm going to believe, this is what I'm going to do, this is how I walk, because you've already fortified yourself with all those things. And then when, when something comes along or a person comes along like Jesus who's got grace and truth and you're hearing that he's casting out devils, he's healing the sick, miracles are happening, the very first thing that happens in your life is that wall of reason begins to come up and say, well, I don't really know if that's possible because you've never grew up in the impossible. You only grew up in the things that hurt, damaged, disappointed, caused rejection and all those things. And so here we have this young lady. This is a Syrophoenician lady. Matthew chapter, mm, I said 17. Mm, I don't miss that one. I'll tell you what, Matthew chapter 8. Here we go. Must be 12, yeah. Matthew chapter 8. You here? Check this out. Verse 5. When, it enter, when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, where is he again? Back at his headquarters. There came to him a centurion as that Syrophoenician lady came. He came to Jesus beseeching him. Again, people come for curiosity. People come for cures. People come for, you know, anything to church. Some people come just looking for a spouse. Some people just come, you know, because they want to belong. People come for different reasons. But he's coming for someone else. And it says, he said, Lord, my servant life at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou would come under my roof, but... Speak a word only. A what? A prophetic work. Speak a word only, and my servant shall be healed. What do you mean? How, how do you know this? How does he know this? Because of living there, paying or working for the men and women of that synagogue there. You know, because in one translation it says he, he's, he's, he built a synagogue for the Jewish people. He was close to them. He listened to what they said or the things they said. He didn't have a real understanding until he had heard about Jesus. And then he had put together what they couldn't put together, that the authority of God was rested in Jesus Christ as he had authority from the Roman government. And he says this. He says, just speak a word only, my servant shall be healed. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he come. And guess what? And to my servant, do this, indeed, he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he said, what? Somebody finally got this. 
that I am here on a mission to intercede between all of the interloopers that came in with the first Adam's uh, treason and everything that came in with sin. I am here to mediate now between man and God to bring the authority of God against all those things so that man can see that God loves, that God cares, that God has a goodness for them, and that God is waiting just with open arms for anyone that will say, let grace and truth come. Notice, he didn't just say, Jesus, you know, uh, if you just come over and pray over him, he says, your word is your heart. You can't separate your heart from your word. Jesus said it later on. He says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, your mouth knows what's in your heart. And this centurion knew that if he could just get Jesus to speak a word, the heart of God would be released to his servant. That's grace and truth released at the same time. Mark chapter 7. Oh, my wife's over. She said, Mark chapter 7, the Syrophoenician lady. I think she wants me to teach some more. Mark chapter 7, the Syrophoenician lady. Beginning in verse 25. This is a double witness tonight. What's in your heart? What's in God's heart? Jesus. Didn't we read it in the beginning? He's the son who rests in the bosom of God. So if he's to rest in the bosom of God, he's the word of God. So he can't be changed. He's the truth of God and he's the grace of God. You got to get that. So you can get that sickness out of your body. You know, tell that sickness, not just the grace of God. The Lord loves me and I, I'm God's lovable. You know, I'm his son. I'm his first, just whatever you want to, you know, claim yourself to be, you know. But guess what? Also, also make a declaration about, about the truth of God towards your body, that by his stripes, he opened up his body so that my body could be healed. There was a transfer of power that came out of his body to my body, to anyone who believes on his name. And when you speak the name of Jesus, then guess what? You start cutting at the root of that thing that has been transferred by iniquitous bloodline or that thing that has been brought into your body by you agreeing with somebody else or opening up the doors in your, in your body to something else or whatever. But that thing begins, he begins to lay the ax to the root of that thing so that you might be free. In the name of Jesus. Don't forget that. Use it tonight. It says, the Syrophoenician lady, my nation, she so besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of, out of, his, out of her daughter. Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled, for it is, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to little dogs. Won't that go against your reason? Won't that go against your senses? When the one that you're asking to help you says that, guess what, it's not available for you, but it's only available for others? Won't that go against your senses? Hmm? Won't that go against your reason? Yeah, sure it will. She answered him and said, yes, Lord, but the dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. In other words, I don't need a loaf of bread. All I need is the crumbs of your power. And if you release the crumbs of your power through your word, hey, my daughter's going to be all right because guess what? I'm not asking you to go back there. I'm just asking you to say it. And guess what? He said unto her, for the same, go thy way, the devil is gone out of your daughter. For this saying, why? Because she agreed with what was in his heart. He came to set the captives free. He could not deny that. See, he could not deny himself, no more than he could deny himself when he was walking on water and Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. He says, I can't deny myself. Come on out here. And this is what this lady is doing. She's letting him know and Jesus is letting her know. I can't deny myself because you know who I am. When you know who he is, grace and truth, then you'll know, guess what? That Jesus always goes at the problem, the cause, to make the effect work in your life, healing. So tonight, 
I got to close with this because we've been gone for a while. But when you hear messages on grace, or it's always just talking about how good God is, make sure that even in hearing how good God is, that you also understand the commands of God, the doctrines of Jesus Christ. Make sure you understand those things. Those, you can't throw doctrines out. And then just grab grace and say, well, I just want all this good stuff to happen to me. But what good thing are you giving Jesus? Do you ever question yourself on how well you're pleasing him? Because you can only please him not by just taking grace, but by walking in truth. That's how you please the Lord. And so in tonight's message, I, I leave you with the question to examine yourself. You know, yes, we are in the end times, and I don't teach a whole lot about the end times because I know that it's the end time, and I know it's coming exactly the way Lord, the Lord said it's going to happen, and it's even going to happen the way men are not even perceiving this going to happen, but it's coming to pass. But in the meantime, you need wealth, you need health, you need revelation, you need power, you need joy, you need some substance in your life, you need some things in your life that cause you to constantly walk by faith and not renege on the promises and the faithfulness of God and go back into the world or to live like the people in the world live. You need to have these things in your life. And this is why Jesus Christ gave us grace and truth so that we could walk and enjoy this life and live life above the ordinary. That's what grace and truth does for us. Not just grace, but grace and truth. Amen. God bless you tonight. I pray that you study this for yourself. Uh, ask the Lord to open up your eyes to more grace and truth and see how they work together, the power of twins that came in the heart of God from, for, through Jesus Christ. And as you look at these things and study these things for yourself, then begin to apply the truth of God's word into your life and watch the, watch the fruit of those old attitudes, those old anger things, those old whatever they are. Watch that fruit die as you lay the acts of truth to the root of that thing. Not just talk about that, but lay the acts to the root of that thing and watch the power of God work in your life. Amen? God bless you. Apostle Chastain Rock here tonight. Thank you for your time. We've been a, we've been a little while, but thank you for your time, and uh, it's a good thing to study the Word of God together. Amen. God bless you.